right we got a california converter here for a ford truck uh if it's 96 or older 95 and older it uh is an obd1 not an obd2 if it's you know if you look it up make sure it's an obd2 not an obd2 um, if it's an obd1 convertible converter um all you need is one that's california approved for 95 and a, whatever five and below if it if it's for single exhaust it's just going to be under t t1 approval truck so it has to be a truck catalytic converter you can't put a car catalytic converter in a truck can't put truck car truck catalytic converters in a car it has to be approved for a truck of whatever kind uh, it's best if you get if you're doing one of these fords it's best if you get the one that is the original one uh, if you want to verify that you can go to the crb website find out all the information on that i talked to the referee and actually he told me that if it's a t1 approved catalytic converter for california and you have a single exhaust it's good to go it doesn't matter if it fits on a chevy ford whatever as long as it's t1 approved so if it's a dual exhaust it has to be t2 approved makes sense same thing with cars it's the same thing i don't know what the code is for cars there's a one in the number two if it's just one of those universal ones it should fit it should be legal and whether it fits or not i don't know so what i did is i just cut the other one off just took a i used a uh the best thing to use is um sawzall i just use a cordless sawzall cut it off uh, make sure that when you cut the back off that you cut off with enough of the old pipe if you see how it's flared out right there flared out make sure you have some of that flare left because the new one is supposed to slide over this one if it doesn't slide over it you're gonna have to get a little piece of exhaust and make a sleeve put it over it that's what i'm running into here uh these were both of the same size if you don't put a sleeve on here you drive it for a little while it's gonna break off yeah you need a mig welder gas welder but back years ago we used to gas weld all this stuff now it's all mig weld it's much easier so anyway this is stainless this is regular i use regular rod so it works it just rusts so anyway i got some regular tubing i got some inch and a half tubing i had um this is like one inch i think so it's a little loose I'll just uh, go ahead and use, I slit cut it like that, put it on there, give this sucker a bead. Let's take a look at that in a second. All right, so not the prettiest welds, but uh, there's an old saying that uh, wherever you miss, carbon will fill. So hopefully that works. That's what we used to do in the old muffler days, but it was back then you had gas water you could bend your rod and you could just get around these corners that's real tight in there so only so good you can get it so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and set this thing in bolt it in put the top two i'm gonna, actually going to put a couple of nuts on it let it kind of hang down so i can slide one of these in here weld it inside because it's just too hard if you try and butt weld those things in it's probably going to break off so better to just lap it in there throw it inside you know usually that's what you do exhaust if you butt weld exhaust together you're probably gonna have some problems so anyway let's put it in the car take a look at it so you have to weld through this little hole here that's why i left the back part off and i got that pretty well wrapped around and i had to jack this up in the back because the hanger was bad now I'm just gonna run a bead around here. I got it pushed in as far as I can get it. Just gotta bead on a little bit to get it up as far as you can. I mean, it may not be all the way in, but it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna run a bead around it versus putting the old school clamp on it and have it fall off. Anyway, let's look at the other side. I don't know if I can get you guys over there, but I welded this side from over here. You could probably see better than me. So I don't even know if I got it all the way around, but if it's 90%, it'll probably be all right. Well, I might have a gap right there. Looks like I got a hole right there. I'll probably have to weld that up, huh? Yeah, I'll weld that up. 
I can see it better with the camera than I can right here. I can't see it at all. I just have to do it blind. And sometimes, sometimes you can see it, but you can't get the angle of the welder in there, so it's tough. But it's not too bad. I mean, they wanted eleven hundred dollars to put this thing in. Got it on eBay, original, a, a legit California uh, for like five, less than five hundred dollars, I think, with tax, shipping, and all that. So, I mean, to me, five hundred dollars labor to put this thing in. Come on. It only takes a couple hours to do either do a transmission. So anyway, just gotta have a welder. Harbor Freight welder, I'll show you my settings. You could easily do this with flux score, but I got gas, so there's what I did. 84, 184, 17.6. A little hot, but it's good, at least it's penetrating. I wanna burn through that stuff too. So anyway, get it on there and take a look at it, try it out. Well, the welds don't look like great. I mean, try welding on a hill uh, when you got to hold your helmet with one hand. Yeah, you can't really do a very good job. If you if you want to do good welding, you need to hold your other hand steady so that you can, you know, know where you're going and then can't see. Add that on top of that and see if you can do better than that. Yeah, on a hill. See, your creeper sliding down the hill trying to hold yourself steady and then uh, can't see on top of that on this one here I was welding and I couldn't see and I was going up and I was missing the whole thing so then I had to come down where I can start seeing because I couldn't see a damn thing under here and uh, like I said I'm falling down the hill and I can't hold my I can only use one hand so when you use one hand you can't get steady circles you're shaking you know it just doesn't come out the same as long as it's all there, good, we're good to go. Let's see how it sounds. All right, here goes nothing. She had an exhaust leak before, so it's got a leak right here. One of the bolts is missing on the flange, so as long as it passes smog, really, that's all I care about. But the flange is missing one of the bolts, so yeah, it's got a little exhaust leak. You can see the the flange there. I'm gonna find one more exhaust bolt for that. Anyway, got it on there. That's how you do it if you want to do it yourself. It almost paid to buy the welder, right? Five hundred bucks. Bandits. The car business, you guys, is going to be just worse and worse and worse over the next 10 years because you don't learn it in school. People go and pay tens of thousands of dollars to learn it in some fab school and all this other stuff. And so they got to make their money back by ripping you off. So anyway, that's the way it's going to get. It's going to get worse. And, you know, if they would have just kept teaching automotive in school, then everybody would know how to do it. And the mechanic shops wouldn't uh, be able to just rape you for what they can. Because, I mean, some of the prices I'm seeing now are just, you know, come on. You know, $300 an hour and stuff like that. I mean, it says 100 but they're charging 300 That's what they're getting. So, anyway, especially if you had a lift to do this on. If I drove this thing up on a lift, I could use two hands and weld it real nice. You know, and they have it up on a lift. So, it's a lot easier for them to do. But you do it on the ground, you're going to get a little different results. You're not going to get the same thing. All right, I'll talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. As long as you get on there, it works. That's fine. Pass them out. Who cares?